Hey guys, Jimmy of Vegas here, and in this mini Unity tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can randomly generate enemy spawn points in Unity using C Sharp. Don't forget, click the subscribe button, click the bell icon as well, stay up to date with every tutorial on my channel, and with that in mind, let's get to work. So, to do this, it's actually a lot simpler than you would think. It's just a couple of steps that you have to go through to be able to kind of write the script to do it. So the first thing is to actually have an enemy, and I have my enemy here. There's, it's not actually coded as an enemy, it's just a model at the moment, but if you're doing this, you would already have your enemy coded, you would already have the AI in there. Uh, if you haven't got that or don't know how to do it, I do have tutorials on my channel which will show you how to kind of uh, put that together. So let's just imagine that this guy right here is the enemy and he's already got all his scripts attached to him, so he would be an enemy as such, but for this purpose it is just a model. So we're going to randomly generate him in an area around here and we're going to do it multiple times so we can randomly generate multiple enemies here. So another thing we have to keep uh, in mind is the area that we want him to spawn. It's going to be pretty much over an X and a Z coordinate. So best way to measure it I've always found just nice and quickly is add in a cube and bring the cube to roughly uh, the corners where you would want your enemy to spawn. Uh, keep in mind that I'm not going to do anything on the y-axis, but obviously you probably would have to if you have different levels of terrain. Uh, this is flat, but the same principle would work. So we need roughly about 0 on the x and probably about 31 maybe? 30? 30, 30, we'll go for 30 on the uh, Z. So that will be uh, 0 and... Th in fact, should we go for 1? We'll go 1 on the X, just to kind of bring it up a little bit so we can see in the camera. So 1 and about 30. And if we bring this over way, or maybe here, we'll go round about there so the camera can see it. So 0 there. So we've got about 30 and 0 on the Z. And on the X, probably about... 49. So you can see I've kind of measured this general area here by looking at these coordinates at the top. So when we write the script, we just have to make a note of that. So X, minimum 1, maximum 49. Z, minimum 1, maximum 30. So to do that, we need to create that C-sharp script. So right-click, create C-sharp script, and we'll call this generate enemies. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. So while we do this, I'm going to generate, uh, let's say, 10 of these enemies for now. Obviously, you can have more, you can have less. You could also incorporate other lines of code to enable randomized enemies to occur. It's just the same sort of principle, just kind of mix and match a little bit. Uh, so let's get into this. We do not need the void update. We can get rid of that. And let's get rid of that annotation as well. So the variables. We're going to need one variable for the enemy, one variable for the x position, one variable for the z position, and one variable to count how many enemies we have placed so far. So public game object the enemy semicolon then public int it could be a float if you wanted it to be uh, x pause public int z pause. So you can see here this is the x position and z position. Uh, next one is going to be the enemy count. So public int enemy count semicolon. So by default that's going to be zero. So this is all going to be done inside a good old i enumerator, a coroutine. So what we need to do is i enumerator and we'll call this enemy drop. Open close bracket, open curly bracket, and we need to basically repeat the process until we have accumulated enough enemies. So while, and in brackets, enemy count is less than 10, then open curly bracket and do the following. X pause equals random dot range and in brackets the minimum we said was one and the maximum we said was 49 but i'm going to put 
50 here. Um, I've, I'm sure I've explained it in a couple of different tutorials. Um, sometimes there's a little bit of a bug, in fact most times a little bit of a bug with random.range, it will never generate the maximum value. In this case, 50 is the maximum value, the one before that is 49, but it will generate 49. So it's always best to just put one integer more than what you would want it to be. Uh, semicolon, do the same for the Z position, Z pos equals random.range. And in brackets, that was 1 and 31, wasn't it? So 31, because obviously 30 will be what we would want it to be at the most. Semicolon. Uh, after that, we need to instantiate the actual enemy. And what that means is to place the enemy at the generated coordinates we have just made right here. To do that, instantiate right there. And open bracket. And what we need to do is... Firstly, declare what we want to do with it, i.e. the object. So, the enemy, comma, and now we need to declare its position using vector3. So, new, and in brackets, vector3, there we go, you can see it's appeared for us, excellent. So, x, y, and z, so x, pause, comma, the y position. Now, this is where I said you could generate the y position if you wanted to. I'm just going to go with my standard Y position of the enemy, which is right here, which is currently set as 43. So head back, and that's going to be 43. But again, if you wanted to randomize that, you could use the exact same process as we have here. And then finally, Z pause, close bracket. And next, we need to put quaternion.identity. So quaternion, if I can spell it dot identity there we go close bracket semicolon at this point what we need to do is let's say we want to wait um, a tenth of a second between each one so in total it would take 10 seconds to place uh sorry well one second to place 10 enemies so yield return new wait four seconds and in brackets 0.1 Obviously, you can have this set as anything you want. You could do it once every 10 seconds, once every one second, once every two. You could even do a hundredth of a second if you wanted to. If you're doing a decimal, don't forget that F afterwards because it is a float. Close bracket, semicolon, and then enemy count plus equals one semicolon. And all that will do is add one to the enemy count. So it will repeat itself until we get to 10. And to actually activate that coroutine, we need to go to our start, type start coroutine, open bracket, enemy, drop, oh, close bracket, close bracket, semicolon, and save. And that's all there is to it in the script. So what we've done here is we've started up the coroutine, and this coroutine is going to run until our enemy count is basically 10. Because we're saying while the enemy count is less than 10, then generate X, generate Z, bring in the enemy to that specified position, wait for a tenth of a second, add one, and then repeat again. Obviously, if this becomes 10, it will stop. So let's head back to Unity. And what we need to do now is we need to attach that script somewhere in the scene. So if you have a general object with all your scripts attached to it, you could attach it to that. I currently don't, so I'm just gonna create a new game object, an empty and drag and drop that onto there and you can see all we've got to do is specify the enemy so if i drag and drop alien which is our enemy onto there press play we should see 10 enemies generate randomly there we go perfect so they've generated in completely random positions and the great thing about it is that well, ultimately, if you press play again, it will generate in random positions once again, as we can see. And there is no limit to it. You could generate 20 enemies. You could generate 100 enemies. I guess it just depends on the machine that you're aiming for. If you're trying to do it on a mobile device, maybe not so much. But this is a great way of generating an enemy just in the, on the whole. You could even do it with one. Although if you're doing it with one, you don't necessarily need the while here. You could just have these lines of code. So I'm just going to do it with two. Save it. 
head back to Unity and press play and we'll see where they generate. There we go. So we should be able to see right now they'll generate somewhere here. There we go. Right there. So press play again and they should generate elsewhere. There we go. Perfect. So that is how you can randomly generate multiple enemies at different spawn points. I hope that's helped you guys. I hope you find it useful. And remember, if there's anything else you want to learn, check out my channel. There is hundreds upon hundreds of Unity tutorials for you to learn from. Guys, thank you very much for watching.